Praise God. I don't know about you. I'm, I'll pray for the musicians. I say, Lord, keep them strong. Don't let them backslide. But if they ever do and you take their gift, give it to me. Praise God. Hallelujah. So far, God hadn't given me that gift yet, but I'll walk up here ever so often and I'll just get on this piano and I'll... No, nope, it's not there yet. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody smile at me. I just want to know this is a friendly group. Hallelujah. God's good. Amen? Hallelujah. I don't know about you. I had a great week this week. How many brought your Bibles with you? Oh, let's get them up. I want to see them. Praise God. Okay, this, okay, it's coming up. So it looks like the wave. Praise God. They just go up and praise God. Hallelujah. That, that word's a lamp into our feet. It means it guides us. It's a light into our path. It lets us know when obstacles come, things that will bother us. Praise God. I'm going, to be, I'm, I'm going to begin in the third chapter of the book of Matthew. Praise God. I just entitled this morning's message as the Lord gave it to me, Settlers. Praise God. How, how, how many have ever, have ever seen that commercial? This young boy... He looks next door and he sees how people next to, next to him, how their life is so much bet, better than, than he is. But his father is proud that they're settlers. And the father, he acknowledges that the neighbors have a better life than he does, but he's proud that they live with less. I think sometimes in church, as Christians, we're like those settlers. God's got a little more for us. In some cases, a whole lot more for us. But we're just proud that we're where we're at. Come on. And instead of striving for more, we've settled where we're at. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Praise God. They, many of the church world has settled for less than what God has provided for us. And even though, watch this, even though people around us suffer because you and I have settled for less, still there's no change. In Matthew chapter 3, John Baptist, he makes this statement in the 11th verse. He said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. He's talking to the people. He, he, says, he says, the ministry God's given me is to preach this gospel to make you see how that you come short of what God is expecting for your life. And I'm preaching repentance that, that Jesus is still accepting people. Watch this. So he says, but he that cometh after me, he's mightier than I am. In fact, he's so mighty that, that I'm not even good enough to stoop down and to tie his shoes. And this one who's coming after me, and this one that is mightier than me, when he comes, he is going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with a fire. Wow, that's a powerful thing. So I thank God for John Baptist. I thank God that he taught us to repent. I, I thank God for John Baptist that he taught us the, the, the need and, and, and what Jesus expected of us in baptism. Water baptism. Come on, church. But he says, there's one that's coming after me. I'm the forerunner. I'm getting you ready. Now watch this. Now in Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 talks about the day of Pentecost. And this is a day in Acts chapter 2, he's talking about the day of Pentecost where that, where that, where that the Holy Ghost fills believers. And it talks about how that when, he, when it filled these believers, how they spoke with these other tongues. It goes on in Acts chapter 2, Sister Harrison, it talks about those that weren't filled that day. How they begin to laugh and how they begin to make fun of those that were. And Peter stands up in Acts chapter 2 and he tells a, a, 
the crowd, hey, whoa, whoa, calm down, calm it down. He tells them, be quiet. And in verse 16 of Acts chapter 2, he says, This is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. If you look in, in Joel chapter 2, I didn't, I didn't write this down. It won't come up here. It's in verse 28 and 29. He tells, he tells Joel prophesies the exact same thing that Peter now speaks to the people. Watch in Acts chapter 2 and verse 17. It's what's this. He says, it'll come to pass in the last days, says God. You know when God says something... That's just the end of it. There's really no way that we can argue with it, no way we can change our theology, no, no way we can say, well, God didn't have a full revelation. It says, in the last days, it'll come to pass, says God. God says, I will. It's not a denomination. It's not a man thing. God says, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And when that happens, something, something amazing is going to happen. He said, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. He said, your young men shall see visions and your old men will dream dreams. Brother David, I never understood that until the last few years I got a recliner. <laughs> and every time I sit down in that recliner, now I begin to see visions of some sort. Come on. But yet I see here where John Baptist says the ministry God gave me was to baptize and to teach people that their level of living is not going to get them into the throne room of God. And he, and, he, and he sent me, John Baptist says, my ministry was after these people accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, to baptize them in water. It's their public profession of faith. And he said, that's what Jesus sent me to do. That's what God sent me to do. But he said, I want to tell you, people, there's somebody that's coming right after me. And he's mighty. He, he, he has more authority than I have. He said, he has so much. You think I'm, I'm a good man. There's somebody coming after me. I'm not, even, I'm not even worthy to pick up and carry his shoes. And when he comes, he's going to give you the Holy Ghost. And he's going to give you a fire. Wow. You know the bad thing about the Holy Ghost? Y'all know there was a bad thing about the Holy Ghost? There's a bad thing about the Holy Ghost. It's the people sometimes that he feels. Hello. Now the Holy Ghost, boy, I got to have a place quiet now. <laughs> the people that say, I don't want the Holy Ghost, they want to listen to this one. The people that do want the Holy Ghost, they want to listen to this one. You see, God fills earthen vessels with his presence. Uh. God fills earthen vessels with his presence. And you know what happens? Sometimes people get filled to overflowing, Brother Merle, and then they just sit on it. Then they just take it for granted. And they walk around and they tell the world they're still filled. When now they hadn't had an overflow and an outpouring in many years. And they've settled back instead of pressing forward. Instead of trying to be more like him. I've arrived and if you don't like it, go take a flying leap at a rolling donut. Hallelujah. Listen to me. That's the only thing wrong with the Holy Spirit. It's that sometimes the vessels that God has filled and is sanctified and set apart, they quit, they quit pressing in further. And they quit, and they quit allowing, as the scripture said, out of their bellies would flow rivers of living water 
I want to tell you, there's a lot of people today that say they're filled with the Holy Ghost that hadn't had an overflow, hadn't had an outpouring, hadn't prayed in tongues in their personal prayer life in quite a while, who hadn't looked at something, at an impossible situation, and called those things that be not as though they were, who hadn't stirred up their self in their most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. That's the only thing wrong with the Holy Spirit. There's nothing wrong with the Holy Spirit, but sometimes the vessels that have the Holy Spirit have taken it for granted. Mm. That was hot off the wire. That wasn't part of my message. Mm. You see, the church keeps settling. Many times in the church we're content to simply have the ministry that John Baptist had while we discount the ministry that Jesus came to give. John says that my ministry is to see you saved but Christ's ministry is to take those that saved and empower them to do more than they would ever do before. Wow. I, I take you all the way over to the 18th chapter of the book of Acts. We see this preacher. He comes to Ephesus. And he is a tremendous preacher of Jesus Christ and, and about the, 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 the work that he did at Calvary. His name is the name of Apollos. The scripture says he was a great preacher. It says that he was powerful. But it says the extent of his knowledge was that of John the Baptist. In other words, he preached repentance and he preached the need to be baptized. Okay? And if you continue reading in chapter 18, there was this couple by the name of Aquila and Priscilla. And they decide they're going to the revival meeting. They enjoy the services. They listen to the services. But after a while they realize all he knows is to, be, is to repent and be baptized. And so watch this. And so, and so they realize he didn't have the knowledge of the full and the complete gospel that Jesus gave to the church. So, so in Acts chapter 18 verse 26. Put that up there real quick. I want you to see this. So, so as he began to preach in the synagogue, after Aquila and Priscilla heard him, they took him. They said, come here, we need to talk to you uh, uh, off to the side. And so they took him off to the side. And watch this. And they expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. Nothing he preached and nothing he taught was wrong. But Jesus, Jesus wants you to know that after you're saved and you're forgiven, that he wants to empower you with the third person of the Godhead who will never leave you nor forsake you, who, who will speak to you. And when your anger starts to get mad and you, begin, and you start to call somebody a... He'll tap you on the shoulder. You thought I was going to say it, didn't you? You don't know what I was going to say. Praise God, the Holy Ghost will stop you, though. And he'll stop you there and he'll say, listen to me. That's not the nature that's inside of you. Amen. And you won't say what you were going to say. These fears and these phobias that, that so many in the church have. Listen to me. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Praise God. He'll, he, will bring, he will bring his word. The scripture said the Holy Ghost will. Mm. Praise God. I'm saved and I'm forgiven. But have you ever gotten up in the morning and felt like that you were, that you were backslidden and that you was, a, you was a dirty piece of dirt? Only me and Bubba here. Praise God. Well, anyway, we felt that way before. But let me tell you something. That's why, that's why, Brother Key, I need the Holy Ghost. Because when I feel so low and I don't feel like getting up and I don't feel like I should pray and I don't feel like God will forgive me and I feel like giving up and I feel like laying down and dying, the Holy Spirit will come and say, Listen, son, I hadn't left you and I hadn't forsaken you. I'm a friend and I stick closer to you than any brother. I love you. You get up and you dust yourself off because you're more than you think you are mm, praise God now watch this and so they expounded the way of God more perfectly to him now within a couple days Apollos leaves Ephesus 
And Paul happens to come to Ephesus. Okay? Chapter 19, Acts chapter 19, verse 2. Now, here's, here's, here, the, uh, listen. I studied, I, I, didn't, I didn't catch this for a long time, but, but Daniel, watch this. After chapter 18, the very next chapter is chapter 19. Y'all don't catch that. Y'all didn't know that, did you? Well, duh. But watch this. When you read your Bible, you'll see what's happening in chapter 18. And you won't realize that Paul's got a plan that after Aquila and Priscilla expound the way of Christ more perfectly to him. And they, and they speak to him. The scripture doesn't say... Uh, how it changed Apollos' ministry. But watch this. Within the next couple days, chapter 19 begins, and Paul comes to the very town that Apollos just left. And we read the story. Watch this. In verse 2, <clears throat> Paul comes to Ephesus, and he asks him this question. He says, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And so they say, uh, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Listen to me. People can't receive until they know it's available to them. Wow. Verse 2. And he said unto them, Under what then were you baptized? And they said, Under John's baptism. Remember Remember John? He's the one who baptized with water to repentance. And he said, but there's coming something after me. I'm not worthy to touch, okay? And then Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him. In other words, that they should believe on Jesus Christ. Watch this. What Paul was saying, he said, he said, he says, once you repent... Now you are a candidate to receive the Holy Ghost. Get a hold of that. And it says that when they heard this, then they were then baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And in verse 6 says, after they, were, after they were baptized in the name of Jesus, then Paul laid his hands on them. And it was after he laid his hands on them that the Holy Ghost came on them. And it was after the Holy Ghost came on them that they began to speak with tongues and prophesy. Now, I know a lot of people, they ask, well, why, why tongues, okay? James is very clear about that. James says that the tongue is a little member, but it sets on fire the very nature of hell. The, the, the scripture says, says that, that the tongue is unruly and no man can tame it. How many of you, since you've been married, said something, and as soon as it come out, you wish you hadn't said it? There'll be more men's hands go up than women. Praise God. I don't know why that is. Praise God. It's just something I've noticed over the years. Praise God. Because sometimes we just say things we don't want to say. But James says, you know what we do? We take a big horse that weighs, that, that weighs hundreds, sometimes uh, over a thousand pounds, and we'll put a bit in their mouth. And when you put it in their mouth, you can, just, you can just move it just a little bit, and you can guide it, and you can direct it any way you want. Or you can take a large ship. It doesn't matter how large that ship is. But you put that small rudder on there, and he says it guides it. And, it, and, 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 and when, you see, when you see rocks and you see something that's going to destroy it, you can take that rudder, and, and you can avoid the pitfalls of life. And so the Lord says, and so the Lord says, I'm going to do what no man can do. I'm going to tame what no man can tame. I'm going to change what no man can change. But we're settlers. I'm satisfied where I'm at. I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven. Where he's gone. I was talking to a friend yesterday. And he was showing me his new truck. And he said, I know, Brother How, I didn't need this much truck. But he said, ever so often, I have to pull something pretty heavy. He's in construction business. He said, I got that diesel. And it'll pull a house off a slab. He was proud of that truck. 
He said, I don't have to have the extended cab, but when my crew rides with me, we can all ride together. He said, I like my truck. He said, I tell you, it makes my work a lot easier. Mm. Can I tell you? I can be saved, and I can repent, and I can make it to heaven somehow. Praise God. I can struggle along, and I can, I can, I can, I, I, I can deal with my... Mm. I wonder how many in the church still struggle with things that you want to lay down, and you can't lay them down. I've got a truck... It's got a great transmission in it. It can almost drive down the road with a trash can in the back. <laughs> it gets me where I want to go. It just takes me longer to get there. I used to, every time that the, I'd turn the air conditioner on, there's a place I could hit it twice and the air conditioner would come on. Now my whole dash is cracked all up. <laughs> so I duct tape. I duct taped it up. Praise God. You know what I'm talking about, Bubba. Am I telling the truth here? Praise God. It'll get you where you want to go. I've done changed the headlights out two or three times, and they keep going out anyway. So it's a daylight-only truck. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's a single cab. Praise God. It's now got a hole in the liner up there. I don't know how that hole got there. But it gets me where I want to go. I don't make it in style. Not a whole lot I can do with it. I got a flat bottom fishing boat that I pull with it. But I've learned not to stop on the side of a hill. Because <laughs> I'll hit the car behind me if I don't. It'll get me where I want to go. But it's a struggle to get anywhere I go. Listen to me, church. We're settlers so much. Jesus says you don't have to struggle. Jesus said, you don't have to fight. I want to tell you something. The word says the way of the transgressor is hard. Oh, brother, how? But it's hard living. No, it's not hard living for Jesus. Not when you've got all he's told you to have. Not all he's wanting to give it. Listen to me. The the way of the transgressor is hard. And and listen to me. The way of the righteous is a beautiful thing. Hmm. Praise God. He laid his hands on them. You see, the only reason these people in Acts 19 had not received is because they were not never taught it was it was available to them. Watch this, Revelation 19:10. You got to put that up. Watch this. See, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Well, that that's powerful there. Watch this. And so and and so I, I spent quite a bit of time last night. Just breaking that, that down. I don't have any English teachers in here. But, but I broke the sentence structure down over and over. And I, I, I looked up, up, up all the different definitions of each word there. Listen to me. Listen, what that's saying, what that's saying is, is, is the thing that, that witnesses to, to the world about Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. What is the spirit of prophecy to exercise in the prophetic office? So what it's saying is, is being filled with the Holy Ghost and operating in the prophetic is a clear sign to the world that Jesus Christ lives inside of you. Wow. Boy, I could go on at that. Watch this. You know what's wrong with the Holy Ghost? Leave that up there. Don't take that down. Sometimes the only time that we even consider the Holy Spirit is in a room full of people. You know what's wrong with the Holy Ghost? It's sometimes, Brother Dan, people that have never prayed in private, they'll get up in a public area. Now watch this. And Brother Gary, they'll feel an overflow of the Spirit of God all around them. And they'll get free. Oh. Somebody listen to me on this. They'll get free. Because they feel the overflow. That's in the, that's in the house. And they get free. And they believe God. For things they'd never believe him for. They trust God for things they'll never trust him for. But you know what's wrong with the Holy Ghost? 
Because then when they get away from everybody else, because they, they haven't been flowing in the Spirit and they hadn't been praying in the Spirit and they hadn't been trusting the Spirit of the Almighty God, they go back to believing and thinking about everything that they believe in in the flesh. What's wrong with the Holy Ghost? Why doesn't it work up here? Well, I see it works up here. When I'm around the altar, I can believe God. But when I go home, I, didn't be, I can't believe for God. Well, listen to me, honey. Listen to me right now. The Holy Ghost, when he's inside of you, is just as real at home as he is right here. And when you're all alone, there's nothing wrong with the Holy Ghost. There's just we got to lift our hands and we got to start calling out to him. And we got to call those things that be not as though they were. Who gives hope, believed in hope. And we, and, and, and we allow the Spirit of God to just flow out of us. We begin to call out to him. Listen, I won't give you a dime for somebody who can move supposedly in, in the presence of God in a, in a crowd but when they're all alone, they don't know how to pray. They don't know how to believe. They don't know how to stand fast. Listen to me. The Holy Spirit is with you all the time and he's there. And listen to me. I want to tell you, the Holy Spirit is there. When hell comes in against you, you can rise up and you can rebuke him in the name of Jesus and God will be with you. Mm. Praise God. You know, unsaved people can come in and you can have a beautiful song and they'll go, wasn't bad. Had a little more of a rock beat. I might even like that. You can take communion and somebody that's not saved come in and say, hmm, wish they had a bigger cracker. I'm hungry. And they'll think that's okay. Somebody will come in, there'll be a baptism service, and they'll go, man, I wouldn't do that, huh? I just got my hair fixed at the beauty parlor. <laughs> that lady will charge me $40 to fix this again. But you take somebody come in that's unsaved, and the Spirit of God busts loose. People get delivered. Demons get cast out. Lives get changed. I want to tell you something. Oh, I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. I want to tell you something. When the Spirit of God's moving, you either want to get out or you want to get in. Come on, church. Praise God. Listen to me. The testimony of Jesus, the spirit of prophecy. See, Jesus believed that this empowerment was so important that, 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 that Jesus, after the resurrection and before he ascended back to God, watch what he did. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. Put that up, please. And being assembled together with them, Jesus commanded them that they should not leave Jerusalem. But they should wait for, I don't care what your translation says, watch this, King James says, wait for the promise of the Father. In other words, don't just get a blessing. Don't come and get a blessing. Don't come and feel good. But you don't leave here until you receive the uh, the means a specific promise. The promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of him. Now watch this. Verse 5. For John, we go back to John again. He said, John baptized with water. But God's command is that you be baptized with the Holy Ghost in the next few days. Get a hold of that. Wow. Watch this. You see, the reason that Christ believed that being full of the Holy Ghost was so vitally important, he knew that the life, in the life that you live now, that there's going to come a day, and that day is now, young people. People ridicule you for being a Christian. Say, so you're a virgin? Oh, that's terrible. Because she's a virgin. Oh, he's a virgin. Oh. Oh, Pastor, you shouldn't say that. I'm not saying nothing. had never already been said. Right. Listen to me. You'll be, he, knew that, he knew that you'd be ridiculed for doing the right thing. And there'd be a temptation to give in to what man says so they would leave you alone. Right. Mm. He knew that we needed that extra octane not to compromise. 
and live a life that always has our light, our light shining. Jesus knew in these last days that there would be demonic manifestations in people's lives around us. And much of the church today, when a demonic manifestation takes place, we want away from it. Those people are crazy. Get them crazy people away from me. I can't, those, we don't call them demonic manifestation. We call them crazy people. We call them stupid people. We call them people with problems. Well, Jesus came to seek and to save those which was lost. And we need the Holy Spirit so that we can know that greater is, is the one that lives in our life than the one that lives in their life. Come on, church. That's good stuff. Praise God. He knew that instead of being fearful, that as children we were supposed to be bold. There are so many Christians today that are living with fears and phobias in their life. Jesus knew that people would be overwhelmed with depression. I'm not against medication. I thank God for what the doctors have given. But so many people in the world deal with depression. When Jesus said the Holy Spirit was there to give you life and give it more abundantly. Come on. There's so many of Christians that deal with anger. I do pretty good, but when stupid people get around me, I, I tell you what, I'll, I'll, do, I'll just spin off on them. God gave me the ministry of spinning off. Hello. Fears and phobia, but what's this? In 1 John chapter 4 and verse 8, the scripture says, put that up please, 1 John 4 verse 8. Boom, okay. He said that he that fears is not yet been made perfect in his love. Watch this. Jesus, God Almighty, is perfect love. And he takes fear out of our life. Because he knows that that fear is going to torment us. But he knows. But watch this. And he says people that still deal with fear inside their life. It doesn't mean that they're not saved. It means that they hadn't fully matured yet to where God wants them to be. And that's why he wants the Holy Spirit to be in life. Because in John the scripture says the Holy Spirit would bring back to our remembrance. He would, he, he would guide us in all truth. He'd say don't do that and do, do that. And, and listen he would keep us from making all the failures and all the mess ups that we keep making. That's what his word says. Now watch, I, I, get, I get ready to close. Holly, you can come. The Word tells us in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 10 that in Jesus we're complete. And Jesus is the head of all principality and power. So, so, so now we ask, well, how are we complete in Him? Well, John says that He's the giver of the Holy Ghost. And when we completely accept what He came to give us, I want to tell you, Dave, depression cannot stay in your life. Anger can no longer take control over your life. Fear and phobias will leave out of your life. Someone asked me the other day, said, Pastor, there's a lot of, there's a lot of women that live in secret abuse. And her husbands beat them up. Why aren't you preaching more about that? Because this is my theology. When a man truly gets saved and he gets full of the Holy Ghost, he'll quit beating his wife and he'll, he'll start treating her as Christ told him to treat her. Come on. Come on, church. Praise God. Oh, but you don't understand how mad she makes me. Well, sir, I'm just going to say this. You don't get mad at other men like that. It's because you're a coward. Hmm. I'll just let that just soak in. Listen to me. He offers us the Holy Ghost because in Jude verse 20 he says it'll strengthen me and it'll build me up. It'll, he encourages me. The Holy Ghost was given to be more than simply a, a display in service. But it was given so that God's strength and God's peace could rest continually in our life. And so I, I just tell you that I say quit settling for a life that just gets by. 
God designed you to be a conqueror. He designed you to have the victory. He designed you to be a joyful person. A person who knows that they're able to take authority over their struggles. And this morning, I'll just be honest, I don't want you to leave here having settled. Because I'm going to tell you, it's Holy Spirit's for you. And I want to say this too. Because this is when a lot of Pentecostals turn off and say, Well, I've received the Holy Ghost. You notice I didn't ask you about receiving the Holy Ghost. I want you to be full of Him. I want Him to overflow out of you. There's something a beautiful thing. Can I tell you, there's been there's a lot of vessels that once filled once received and listen to me no hands raised but I want you to think about this when was the last time that you all by yourself not in church because see it's easy to feel that overflow from others but when was the last time all at home or, or out somewhere and hell itself was coming against you and you started praying and you started praying and the Spirit of God just began to swell up within you. And you began to speak in that heavenly language. And not only did you speak in that heavenly language, but when you were through praying, your whole countenance and your whole attitude was different. You had victory. Even though you didn't, you didn't with your natural eyes see anything different, in your spirit and in your heart you knew you had victory. Listen to me. If that hasn't been you this past week, then you need a brand new infilling. You need to build that spirit up. No, he doesn't just come and go and come and go. But listen to me. Sometimes we allow him just to lie dormant. And it's like we starve him out. Don't be a settler today. I want you to live in victory today. Stand with me if you would. Heads bowed, eyes closed, no one looking around. This is not a time to go to the restroom. Not a time to go check your children in the nursery. They're fine. Holy Spirit will take care of them. This is a time to receive everything God has for you. If you've accepted Jesus, your Lord and Savior, but you've never come forward and you've never asked Him to fill you with the Holy Spirit of God, I want to tell you, today's your day. I'm not, I'm not even going to beg you because, listen to me, you should never have to beg when you're given the greatest gift that as a believer you can receive. If you've never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I'm going to ask you to come quickly. Come quickly, just stand right in front of these altars. Come on, I want you to stand. Don't, I don't want you to bow. I want you to stand. I want you to come quickly. Come on, it's time for you to receive. It's time for the Spirit of God to come on you. It's time for you to receive. Praise God. Praise God. I'm going to give that once. I'm not going to give that call again. This is your time right now. Praise God. Praise God. Now, number two, I'm asking you this. How many of you to say that you're filled with the Holy Spirit. How many of you that say the Spirit of God, that you're, that you're full of, of, of the presence and the power of God? And this week you haven't prayed in that heavenly language. And you hadn't had a breakthrough. And you hadn't felt that peace flow into your heart and life. I'm going to tell you right now, I want you to come. Come on. Step out and come. Come on. Don't settle no longer. Don't settle no longer. It's time to come. Come on, it, it's time to be victorious in life. Come on, come on, come on, church. I want you to come. I don't want you to kneel. I want you to stand. I want you to lift them hands toward heaven right now. Come on, church. Father, I bless you. I bless you, Father. Come on, church. Praise God. Oh, glory. Come on. Come on. Come on. I want you to reach out to the Almighty God right now. Father, I come to receive your peace. I come to receive your glory. I come to receive you, Father. Come on. Come on, church. Don't settle no more. 
I want God, I want you to speak hidden mysteries into my life. I want you to give me the peace. I want you to, Lord, I want your presence on me so I won't compromise. Father, I bless you today. Come on. Come on, church. Jesus. Come on. Praise God. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to beg for that either. Listen to me. God's given you, God's commanded you. John taught you. John Baptist said, I got something great. But once I give you what's great, there's somebody coming that's going to give you even more. Come on. I want a lady believer to come and just lay your hands on, 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 on each one of these ladies. Come on. I want a, I want a male believer, a Holy Ghost filled believer. Come lay your hands on each one of these men. Come on. Come on, church. Come on, church. Praise God. Jesus. Praise God. Come on, church. Why continue to struggle with life? Come on in and jump into the deeper waters. Come in and, and jump into to the deeper things of God right now. Let God take control right now. You say, well, I'm not sure. Trust, just trust the Lord right now. Trust the Lord right now. You struggle with, with secret things. You struggle with fears. You, you struggle with, with imaginations. You struggle inside your marriage. You need to come on up right now. You need to come on up right now and just press on through. Let the Holy Spirit just come and overwhelm your soul. Come on. Praise God.
Father. Blow the music down just a little. I want to make one prayer. They're going to sing and we're going to dismiss. But Father, standing in this congregation are confused minds and those that have made the decision that's really not what I want. Father, I'm asking, Lord, that for both of these two sets of people, that your Holy Spirit would come and begin to hover over them. Because, Lord, it's not, they don't feel this way because they're in rebellion. They just don't understand your goodness and your grace yet. But, Father, I'm asking, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would come and hover over their life. And over the next two to three days, that they would sense an intensity of the sweetness of your presence. And you'd reveal yourself to them. And you would even feel them, Father. So that this dynamo, this self-sustaining power would operate inside their lives. For they would not continue to fall. For they would not continue to struggle. I give you the praise, Father. Speak and go into their lives. In Jesus' name. God bless you. I give myself, I give myself to you. Praise God.